Hey guys, welcome back to another Rotmig video. And for today, I wanted to make a general guide video again called How to Get Good at Realm of the Mad God. I know, very original title. Um, I have a few guides in particular so far about mostly character related stuff, such as how to quickly level up or how to stop dying. But uh, because you guys suck at the game so much, because I noticed there's still some people confused with general game tips, that's the point of this video. So let's not waste any more time and get started. The first thing you need to wrap your head around is that Rodmig is an MMORPG, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. And if you have never played an MMO before, many if not all of them are just really grind-heavy. They're not grind-heavy in the sense that you have to practice and get better because I know the meta of popular games is shifting more towards PvP, competitive games. That's not the case for MMOs. You don't necessarily need to be smarter than the enemy team or the enemy player. You just need to be more patient, I guess. The number of hours you put into the game will directly contribute to your rate of progression. That's not to say that you have to put in 25 hours a day, 8 days a week, 366 days a year. There are plenty of top level players, myself included, who only play for maybe an hour or two for the usual routine. Having said that, we've also been playing the game for a significant period of time, so we know how to maximize the use of our time and not just wander around aimlessly. Take some time to learn the game's content. I don't know about you, but I as a player love learning about things. I could watch videos, read wiki, and all that as a pastime, like when I'm eating something. You guys know that childish wonder you have whenever you play a game for the first time? Everything's amazing to you, even though to like an experienced player, it might just be absolutely nothing. For example, the first time you got wine cellar tops, you thought you were just the best player on the block. That excitement is what makes me want to know more about every game I play, so it's fun to me, I guess, learning how to get good at a game. But if you're not a big fan of hitting the books, then your main priority is to learn these three things. Naturally, with character progression, you have to know efficient ways to level up without putting yourself in too much risk, especially if you're a new player or you don't have ample resources like spare character slots or vault chests. Your goal is to minimize your risk of death and maximize output. So, while it may be initially really boring, you might only be able to max decks by spamming like 30 spire worlds instead of doing more risky dungeons like the nest or what have you. Remember, it is much easier to build more 8-8s once you finished your first one. The problem is a lot of players die before they even get their first one because they just keep doing dumb and dangerous stuff. Stick to primarily focusing on easy dungeons with consistent yield, which means snake pits, sprite worlds, undead layers, those kinds of dungeons. I don't care if you know how to do tombs or if you feel confident that you can do lost halls on a 0-8. Focus primarily on getting your feet off the ground. Character slots may be limited for some of you, but assuming you have two or three, that is more than enough to get you started. After you understand your classes, work towards the right equipment. For example, if you're playing Wizard, you might want to grab the recurring Terror spell, or consider thinking about Tablet of the King's Avatar, stuff like that. Or if you're playing Archer, Doombow, uh, Void Bow, maybe Burginia, Leaf Bow from Woodland Labyrinth. Just like for the sake of argument. This is where you have to run through the wiki, or just, you know, annoyingly pester someone to give you all the answers until you eventually figured it out. Personally, I don't recommend you do that because that's exactly how you piss off a lot of people and make them ignore you. So just put in a little bit of due diligence and like read the wiki. Realmai is one of the best community made Wikipedias or Gamepedias I've ever seen directed towards a game. Like even AAA games don't have a flushed out wiki as well designed with a beautiful user experience and a nice layout and I guess interface than Realm of the Mad God. So use the resource, it's there. Learn it once, learn it forever type thing. If I was quizzed on what the best equips for each class is, I can probably easily answer that because I know what almost every item in the game is. Many players don't though. Over time, you just sort of figure it out. But you can't get good at the game if you don't know what you need to have to get good at that game. Realm is not complex in the slightest. It arguably has the flattest learning curve I've ever seen from a game. Get level 20, max your character, get equipment. That's literally it. Sure, we can talk about pets, but frankly speaking, the only way to get a good pet is either to just grind a bunch of dungeons, get that fame up, or pay your way to a divine pet. I don't know how much that's going to matter when Vital Combat comes out, but generally speaking, a pet is not a sign of how good you are at the game, take my word for it. There are divine pet players who die all the time. The major factor that contributes to getting good at the game largely depends on luck, that is true. There's no secret to getting white bags or rare equipment, you just have to keep doing dungeons and hope you get it eventually. You still want to have a goal. Wandering around aimlessly every day is not something that's going to get you anywhere. It does help to have a routine in mind. For some people, their daily routine would just be to farm 10 Lost Halls, 10 Fungal Caverns, or some people they would do Tinker or Chests like me. I know not everyone has a storage capacity to handle those kinds of routines, but if you figure out what you're trying to do before you begin doing what you do, then it makes a lot more sense. Like if for today you want to max out speed and dexterity, okay, nail out the snake pits, the haunted cemeteries, the spider dens, not spider den, uh, sprite world, excuse me, and stuff like that. 
Uh, lastly, we're going to be talking about dungeon completion. I said this in my How to Stop Dying video that players actually don't know how to do many of the dungeons. About 90% of all deaths in the game comes from carelessness. Only 10% is from actual legitimate situations where you had zero time to react, like let's say you lagged or your game froze or something like that. Realm is not a hard game. The only dungeon that has meaningful death is Oryx Sanctuary because that's the truest sense of bullet hell. The rest? Just because you weren't paying attention. During some of my streams, I often get asked how I'm able to uphold the conversation while doing Lost Halls, Nest, Fungal Cavern, or even O3. That's because I spent a lot of time before just hyper-focused on learning to complete those dungeons. That means being fully aware of my surroundings, practicing the mechanics, boss patterns, etc. Just observation. If you do it right the first few times, that muscle memory becomes ingrained into your head. You know instinctively, never run over an angry boy when he stays this, or when they're running through a crusade, you want to make sure you avoid the commander, or like stay out of the center of a room when you're fighting a boss. Stuff like that. Basic fundamentals. The best way you can do that is to just play defensively for the beginning. Focus on observing more of how the dungeon works so you can avoid putting yourself in situations that would lead to death. When it comes to bullet hell games, there's a method to all the madness flying about. You would think that just bullets are flying around randomly? Not true. A perfect case for this was the, um, the Oryx 3 Celestial Safe Spot. Uh, I think Japan figured it out. Initially, everyone thought that the Celestial Phase was just dodge and pick a god and pray. But a few players were able to dissect the areas where projectiles were consistently not hitting, leading to discovery of a safe spot that comes through observation, that comes through paying attention, not just running around like a headless chicken. While Divine Pets and good equipment definitely contribute towards the survivability, none of that, and I mean none of that matters, if you have no idea what you're doing. You could be wearing 20 pounds of body armor covered in 10 layers of bubble wrap and I, I don't know, maybe you're swimming in a pool of marshmallows, but if you jump off a cliff, none of that's gonna matter, you're just done. I should also mention that when it comes to Rotmig, there's a growing number of players who are completely missing out on important steps to progression in terms of like, the various stages that you need to understand from like easy, intermediate, difficult. Partly it's the Discord service to blame since they create a huge inflation or an artificial skill inflation, quote unquote. A good half of the players who run Lost Halls and other endgame dungeons should not even be touching those dungeons. Like, you're nowhere near the experience or the, like, I guess, wherewithal and equipment and resources to handle those types of content. The same type of people who complain that dungeons are too hard to do without a Discord server or a raid leader are the same type of people who die in, like, a Mad Lab or an Abyss of Demons. They just don't pay attention. Take it incrementally. Start with the easy stuff until it's fully mastered, then move towards the harder stuff and continue on. If you are the type of player who keeps dying on 2 8s, 3 8s, 4 8s, 5 8s, even 6 8, and you can never make it to 7 8 or 8 8, that's not because the game is hard. That's because you're rushing too hard. For some players, like myself, it took a long time for me to get my first 8 8 because I realized that I just kept dying to random dumb mistakes when I could have easily just played it safe got my first one, and slowly worked towards building my wealth in game. It's very easy to get 6-8, especially in this day and age where potions drop like candy. Just pay attention to your surroundings, don't randomly wander around without having good awareness, stick to a daily routine, have an actual goal instead of going to US West 3 and begging for free equipment. Most importantly, learn the game. I have a lot of complaints about Realm of the Mad God, believe me, but every game has their flaws. There's no such thing as a perfect game. Instead, take the time to figure out the ins and outs of the game and work around it. If you think this game is hard, you clearly have not tried Animal Crossing. Now that's some hardcore sh**. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. I'm sure you were expecting some secret tips on how to lose 100 pounds in 5 minutes, but like everything in life, there really is no secret. The only thing that separates a veteran player from a noob is how much they know the game. That's about it. Little patience wouldn't hurt either. But uh, if you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated, and let me know your comments down below if you have some extra tips you think would be worth sharing that helped you get better at the game. Don't forget to subscribe for future content, but for now that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.